a terrible mistake, but thank God many Americans are now seeing it for what it is and are turning and saying, look, I've got buyer's remorse, independents who voted for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I am frankly somewhat ashamed to say Christians all over this country who go to church every Sunday morning uh, went to the voting booths and yeah. voted for this man, and mm -hmm. they really should have known better. Mm -hmm. They should have known better. This is you talking about pro-life. Somebody brought up pro-life. This man is the most pro-abortion politician perhaps the country has ever seen. Mm -hmm. He single-handedly killed the Born Alive Infant Protection Act in Illinois. Right. Wouldn't let it pass. He said right. because to right. allow a child inadvertently born alive to live would be to undermine the mother's right to choose. So the child must be permitted to die. Lay it on a table and leave it alone until it's dead and then throw it in the trash. And that's who we elected as our president. And then he lied about it. I have to tell you that people tell me all the time, you know, you're, you're black, you ought to support the president. I said, look, I have never since I became a Christian supported a pro-abortion politician. Amen. I'm not making an exception. <laughs> he stood up uh, at the uh, Human Rights Council meeting. First time a president's ever attended one. It's a, it's a homosexual group. And, you know, it's bad enough, in my view, that anybody who calls themselves a Christian would say, I am pro-homosexual marriage, pro-homosexual behavior um, in any way. I mean, that, that's bad enough. Look, we don't hate anybody. I know the, the homophobia thing they throw at us, Islamophobia, there's always a phobia. I think the problem we've got is Christophobia, Bibleophobia, Churchophobia. I mean, I think that's the real problem because they're the ones who, who hate us. We love them. We pray for them. But to stand up and say, every American ought to admire same-sex relationships. I'm thinking, what, what Bible is he reading? Mm -hmm. Admire? Tolerate? Okay, I might buy that. Admire? And yet Christians voted for him all over the country. Yes, black Christians voted for him overwhelmingly, and I'm working on that right now. But look, it was not only black Christians who voted for him. It was people in churches all over this country, from all different denominations and races who voted for him. And, and that clearly has got to stop. That has got to end. This country desperately needs you and Americans all over the land right now who are standing up. Because if we don't stand up now, we may lose the opportunity to stand up. Amen. Because our freedom is not going to be taken away in one fell swoop. It's just piece by piece by piece, bit by bit by bit. I mean, when you tell the American people that they must purchase health care, mm -hmm. and then say, if you don't, the IRS will be breathing down your neck, mm -hmm. and then we have the right to go into your bank account and take the money that we want. Well, what is this? Mm -hmm. The United States of America? Mm -hmm. Or the United States of Soviet Socialist Republics? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he's supposed to be a unifier. Oh, well, maybe the racial tension will end now that we have a Pope African American president. You know, he is nothing but a divider. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because the left can't do anything but divide. Because they don't see us as individuals. Mm -hmm. See, I, I look out, I don't see white people. I see people, mm -hmm. human beings that God made. But the left sees people as, well, there's this group, there's the African-American group, and there's the women, and there's the Hispanics, and there's the Asians, and there's the gays, and, they, and that's the way they view the world. Mm -hmm. They want us balkanized because they can always promote the group as victims, uphold themselves as the heroes and the saviors of the victims, and say, well, now, you know, you've got to look to us because those other people hate you. Now, that's partly why there are not more black people involved in the Tea Party movement, because the media has been beating the drum from the very beginning. They are racist. They hate you. And reporters have come to me and said, well, why do you think there aren't more black people here? So because you keep telling them that these people hate them. <laughs> why would they come? <laughs> but you've got to stand up against that. Uh, we are writing a letter right now. My organization is an open letter to the black church. And I don't like separating and segregating that way, but there are just some things that need to be said. Because I'm black, I feel like I can say them. And what, I, what I'm saying to them is, look, you are violating your own values and voting for people that you know you shouldn't be supporting simply on the basis of race. And you're going to have to answer to God for it one day. Because everything that he does, 
you become his surrogate. You're doing it. Every policy that is ungodly, he's supporting it. If anybody calls you a racist, tell them, come see me. I'll set them straight. <laughs> I refuse to use it. And the reason is, I'm not African. Now, my, my ancestors came from Africa, but I've never been there. And I don't want to live there. And I'm not planning to move there. I'm an American. I'm an American. That's what those of you who have friends who are black, you need to remind them, look, we, we are Americans. You know, we're, we're worshiping the same God. We need to be united on the basis of principle, mm -hmm. not divided on the basis of race. And I'll tell you something, you have my solid pledge. I mean this, if I have anything to do with it, that, that division is going to end. Because I really believe that the black community has been brainwashed, indoctrinated, and hoodwinked into supporting a bunch of people that could care less about them and see them as pawns in the political process to stay in power, and it's about time those chains got broken in check. But, you know, our history is magnificent. I know there are people who denigrated and they say, well, you know, Columbus was this and the founding fathers were slaveholders. Look, People are imperfect and always have been. But you cannot deny the greatness of what they accomplished. 234 years, the single greatest nation the world has ever known. And I say to people who criticize the founding fathers, and of course I met them, I say, listen, when you start a country that lasts 234 years free, then you can come talk to me. <laughs> Until then, I think you owe them a little bit of respect. Because <laughs> they accomplished something that nobody else has ever You all know the story of Ben Franklin. He asked for prayer in the middle of the Constitutional Convention on June 28, 1787. They came out on September 17th. We just celebrated it a few days ago. We had Constitution Day in my church because people are ignorant of our Constitution, ignorant of our founding documents. And as a church, we decided we wanted to start educating our church members. But when he came out, a woman named Mrs. Powell met him and said, well, doctor, what do we have, a republic or a monarchy? And Ben Franklin said, a republic, if you can keep it. And that's the question I believe is before us right now. Can we keep it? One of the people who fought to make sure we became the republic that we are was a pastor right from here in Virginia, John Muhlenberg. I, I, I love this guy because John Muhlenberg was one of the people who's taught us that you cannot separate your faith from the political and public policy life of the nation. You simply cannot do that. We don't want the government dictating to the church, but for us to lay our principles aside and say, well, when I walk into the public arena, I shouldn't bring up my deeply and profoundly held principles. Well, he went into a service one morning in January of 1776, and he was trembling about it because he didn't know whether this was the last time he would ever speak to that congregation. He's preached to them out of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to live. A time to, for peace, and a time for war. And he told his congregation, this is a time for war. He said, and even though I'm a clergyman, he said, I hold my freedom as dear as any man. 300 men stood up in that congregation as he took those robes off. And underneath, he had on a military uniform. But before he left, he said these words, and they resonate in my heart. He said, if you will not stand and fight for your liberty now, the day will come when there will be no liberty left to fight for. Mm -hmm. So it's time to fight, and don't let anybody make you ever sit down again. God bless you. God bless you.